Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Today, the chief principals of the Thunderbolts Project, Wall Thornhill and Dave Talbot, take a closer look at the latest information from the Rosetta mission to Comet 67P. As discussed in previous episodes, the comet nucleus looks nothing like the smooth, icy body expected by mainstream scientists. 67P's double-lobed form may have its ideal analog in the structure achieved by plasma scientist Dr. C.J. Ransom blasting hematite with an electric arc. And the mysteries do not end with the comet's appearance. The so-called water output detected in the comet's coma has puzzled scientists on Earth. Months ago, the detected signal of water was much too high to explain through sublimating ices from solar heating. And on October 23rd, scientists from the University of Bern announced that they are, quote, detecting many more molecules already at large distances from the sun, which comes as quite a surprise. The surface of the comet does not reveal a single trace of water ice. It is covered with abundant rocks and debris, including this 150-foot boulder, which Rosetta scientists have called Cheops. Many of the comet's features make it appear as if it were torn from a mountain. We also see curious chains of pits, reminiscent of many planets and moons. At the comet's neck, we even see features resembling the Martian sand dunes, which planetary scientists attribute to mechanical wind on Mars. While Thornhill begins our discussion with a closer look at the features on Comet 67P, which testify to electrical discharge machining having shaped the comet's surface. One of the key arguments used to support the impact origin of craters in the solar system is that they seem similar to terrestrial explosion craters. However, superficial appearances can be deceptive. There are many unresolved problems with the impact cratering model. The more than 90% of circular craters on the Moon require the supposed impactors to hit the surface vertically. So it was proposed that hypervelocity impacts would cause an explosion above the surface and generate circular craters. However, comets are supposed to have been formed by accretion. Circular craters should be rare. But Comet 67P shows many circular craters. In the image here, we see two overlapping circular craters with no evidence of damage to, or infilling of, the earlier crater. Professor Tommy Gold remarked upon this kind of crater overlap and the fresh appearance of craters when viewing images of the Moon's surface from the lunar orbiter. Planetary scientists have never solved this puzzle. Neat overlapping circular craters are characteristic of electric discharge machining, where an arc strikes the surface vertically and moves from a newly excised crater to the nearest high point, which is generally the wall of the crater just formed. What's more telling is that the walls of the craters on Comet 67P are raised above the surface and sharp-edged. An impact tends to flatten and scatter surface material. Once again, an electric arc melts and sputters surface material cleanly off into space. When the arc ceases or moves on, we see the process frozen like a single frame from a movie. The slightly irregular shape of the crater walls on 67P is reminiscent of Victoria Crater on Mars, which has been investigated both from above and on the ground by the Mars rover, Opportunity. I proposed an explanation for its irregular walls in 2006 based on the unique behaviour of an arc impinging briefly on an anode. This may seem like a contradiction of the comet as a cathode in the sun's discharge, but the electrical berthing process from a planetary surface can have the comet temporarily more positively charged than its surroundings. Victoria Crater notably has a pattern in its floor that is attributed to wind-blown sand dunes, but may more easily be accounted for by the detailed behaviour of an anode arc. So it is significant that the comet has a similar pattern in the neck region. A good example of cathode etching is to be seen on this smooth area and is most closely matched by that seen on Io, with the scalloped walls of its so-called calderas. That is where the comet jets originate, just as we see on Io, along the edge of the caldera. Prior to the Deep Impact mission of 2005, NASA scientists had suggested that Temple 1 lost about one-third of a meter of depth in each orbit. 
When the Stardust Next spacecraft re-imaged the Temple 1 comet surface in 2010, it found that the wall of the most prominent mesa, which was 15 meters high, had retreated an astonishing 50 meters. The excavation of material was precisely focused at the location of the mysterious pixel saturation, which, according to proponents of the electric universe, was the focal point of electrical arcs. The erosion along an escarpment is also one of the features seen on Comet Temple 1. Interestingly, judging by the muted feature to the right, some of the machine's surface material is being deposited electrostatically, mostly in the neck region of the comet, presumably in a manner recently discussed by lunar scientists in reference to migrating lunar dust. All of the visual evidence so far discounts the dirty snowball story of comets and supports the electric universe story of recent planetary history witnessed by our prehistoric ancestors and involving the thunderbolts of the planetary gods. You know, week by week, this comet is challenging all of our popular ideas about comets, their origin and their nature. Here we see this amazing coal black and scorched landscape. We can't find a trace of water. We see a surface dominated by craters and sharply cut, even mountainous peaks. And now we see the comet releasing gases that, under present theory, could not be released at such distances from the sun, not if warming is the cause. Now keep in mind that these observations are not speculation. But how could our long-held comet theories withstand these latest surprises? For decades, comet science rested on a dirty snowball model. The claim has been that volatiles, most notably water and carbon dioxide ices, sublimate as a comet moves closer to the sun. Sublimation simply means volatiles converted directly into gases without passing through a liquid phase. Now, today, 67P is almost 300 million miles from the sun. That's more than three times the distance from the sun to the Earth. At that distance in the vacuum and the deep freeze of interplanetary space, Theorists cannot find a way for trivial warming to account for the molecules now being actively removed from the surface and injected into the 67P coma. This includes formaldehyde, hydrogen sulfide, hydrogen cyanide, sulfur dioxide, and carbon disulfide. At the present distance, origin by sublimation is just not even conceivable. Now, what do we do when a theory runs into contradictory discoveries? Well, the first requirement is to simply expand the field of view. Consider alternative theories, alternative explanations. You know, for many years now, the leading theorists of the electric universe paradigm have claimed that popular comet theory no longer works. They see the 67P discoveries not as surprises, but as confirmation of explicit predictions that follow inescapably from an electric comet model. When comets move through the electric field of the sun, they begin discharging electrically. That would logically begin with sputtering of surface materials by the bombardment of protons in the solar wind. But as electrical stresses grow, that leads to excavation of material by electric arcs. Now that should show up as the Rosetta probe draws closer to the surface or the Filey lander actually reaches the surface and achieves the closest ever view of a cometary surface. And as the comet itself moves toward perihelion this coming summer, what will be the surprises in store for us at that time? For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.